I think you guys can probably hear me. I, um... <sighs> Turn off the music in the background. Hopefully you can hear me. This picture was sent over from my lovely sister. I don't know if you are getting crazy at your house, being stuck at home all the time, but here in the techno lair, we're getting a little crazy, little bananas. And over at my sister's house, they are also getting bananas. This is a little bit of babysitting from one O-scope niece to the other. Uh, if you look in the picture, you will notice that my lovely niece is feeding crayons to my other lovely niece. And um, I asked my sister, I said, well, I mean, do the crayons, what are the crowns like for vitamins? What kind of vitamin C do they have? And she said she didn't know, but they are very high in vitamin wax. hey -o! That was a girl joke, so a mom joke. Mom joke! Still funny. Um, we were talking about Ohm's Law, but before we get to that, I thought we would nerd out a little bit. I got a couple of things in the mail that I'm pretty excited about. Um, the, the economy is being held up by the Martin household buying things online and being shipped uh, to our house. I got in the mail just yesterday a few things and I thought I'd open them up and check them out so we could all nerd out. One of my favorite things to do as a nerd is to buy electronic equipment and then unbox it and open it up. So right here, guys, this, this is a four gigabyte hard drive, or four terabyte, four gigabyte. It's the tiniest little hard drive in the biggest package. This is a four terabyte hard drive. Um, I'm building a server at the house. Actually, I've built a server and I'm slowly filling that server up with music and uh, films like these that I'm doing here, episodes and all sorts of things, pictures. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. Does anybody else have any nerdy things that they've bought while they've been caught at home i suspect you know we can all let our nerd flags fly now that we're at home and nobody can really see us i also in an effort to improve the internet at the techno lair oh, let me let me come up I, I backed up and i was out of focus there for a second sorry about that i got a new cable modem Let's see, can you see the cable modem? Anybody see a cable modem? That is how we are doing internet here. And this cable modem has DOCSIS 3.1, which I'm pretty excited about because where I live, um, I worked with a company that made a bunch of the physical layer chips that implement DOCSIS 3.1. So DOCSIS 3.1 is a really fast way to send internet um, uh, from your house back to the network and from the network back to your house. It is a specific modulation technique, which you know, we're a little bit, uh, we haven't gotten to modulation yet on the Oscope Wizard. We'll get there, we'll get there. DOCSIS 3.1, if you buy cable modem, uh, pro tip, Make sure that it's a DOCSIS 3.1 cable modem and you will be able to get the fastest cable modem service at your house. So, hopefully in the future my internet will be faster! Who doesn't want faster internet? I mean, really. Guys, seriously. Are you struggling with internet at your house right now? I, I don't know. We were struggling. Um, everybody's having to do work from home and school from home and it has put a big strain on the infrastructure. The first couple of weeks of doing that here, the internet would go out like a clock around 9 a.m. and then about 5 p.m. I don't know why those two times, probably because people are cranking up, and then at 5 p.m. they're really cranking up to watch Netflix or YouTube or whatever. Um, but that's gonna settle down. Uh, also, have my good and plenties. Uh, I, I realized that 
I'm literally just in my basement talking to myself. So there's absolutely no reason why I can't have candy while I'm doing that. So I got good and plenties to, to nosh on while I'm eating, while I'm uh, talking to you guys. Back to the point of the show. What is the point of the show? We were talking about Ohm's Law. We began Ohm's Law on the last episode a couple of days ago. And I promised that I was actually going to make measurements. Um, and I never got to it because uh, I, I move very slowly. And this episode only lasts about 20 minutes. And we're five minutes in. And I don't want to take too much of your time because I really hate it. Oh, when sales guys steal my time, they are stealing time from me, and, and I want to give your time back to you, and hopefully entertain you while I do it. Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law, we, we talked about it last time, was discovered or written down, defined, perhaps, defined by a man named George Ohm in 1827, and it states that current equals voltage divided by resistance, or voltage equals current times resistance, or resistance equals voltage divided by current. So there is an V, that's voltage, there's an I, that is current. It's a little weird because it seems like there was be a C for current, but there's also another unit called a Coulomb for charge. That's weird, you know, it's super nerdy at that point. And then R is resistance, but it is an ohm, so it kind of feels like we missed the boat there probably should have been an O, but maybe O's a little bit weird. It could be confused for a zero. And George was German, and he wouldn't want his meanings confused in any way. Um, so before I get into measurements, I did realize that I gave you kind of an overview of George Ohm, but there are two other people involved in this equation because it is volts, current, amps, that's amps, and resistance, which is ohm, so that's, that's old George. So let's take a look really quickly at a few of the other people involved in this equation. Um, let me know if the music's too loud. I have a little bit of music playing in the background right here because I am just a, a lover of music and I hate Silence. I, on the chat it says I for intensity of current. Not just current, but intensity of current. A little bit of serious Gabe coming out. Um, current uh, was discovered by André Ampère, a Frenchman who was born in 1775, and he was the founder of electromagnetism, and he called it electrodynamics. And he invented a bunch of things. A couple of the big things that he invented are the solenoid, which is an electrical um, switch that you can turn on and off with current. And then he also invented the electric telegraph, which is pretty, new, pretty neat. This is a picture of Mr. Ampere. He, one of the most fascinating things about him is in, he was born in 1775. In 1803, he moved to Paris and began tutoring at the Polytechnic School there, and by 1809, he was a professor of mathematics. He didn't go to college. He didn't even have formal education, and in 1809, he became a college professor, which is crazy. In 1827, he published his big magnum opus, the Memoir on the Mathematical Theory of Electrodynamic Phenomena Uniquely Deduced from Experience. Um, and that is where he defined the amp, uh, which is the movement of charge. Um, and then Volt. Volt is named for Alessandro Volta, an Italian who was born in 17, 1745, so he's a little older than old Mr. Ampere, uh, but he is credited as the inventor of the battery and also, strangely, the discoverer of methane which we are all fairly familiar with what methane smells like and um, is. Um, so he made the battery. He called it the Voltic Pile. Here's a picture of his battery. It is the... <laughs> I see a couple of... Um, uh, oh, somebody can't even hear the music. Let's turn the music up a little bit. Oh, can we hear the music? I mean, it's like a chill little... Let's, let's, let's you know, 
Chill out. Hopefully you can hear it. Um, anyway, back to Mr. Volta. Mr. Volta in 1799 created this battery. It's called the Voltic Pile. It is um, also where we get the term volt. Um, and this volt pile is basically a stack of copper uh, plates. And in between the copper plates were electrolytes. And that is a really fancy term. You can make electrolytes out of electrolytic um, sub solutions out of a bunch of different things. He used salt water, which is a really uh, great electrolyte, which is kind of why um, Gatorade's a little salty. You gotta, gotta pump up your electrolytes. Uh, salt, water, electrolytes. Um, so in, in uh, 1799, he made the battery. And then to George Ohm. George Ohm wrote his big treatise. Uh, let's see if I got the, uh, actually have the name of it. Doo, doo, doo. I can't remember what the name of his big book was called. Oh, right here. Circuit Investigated Mathematically. I think that's right. I, I might have the, the oh, other one. Let's see. Oh, the Galvanic Circuit Investigated Mathematically. So this is Mr. George Ohm. He wrote that book in 1827, which means that the Volt was, the, the battery was built and, and discovered in 1799, uh, uh, the Western battery. I, I, I won't go into the history of batteries, but uh, Alessandro got credit for it in, in Western society, 1799. Uh, 1827, Ampere, uh, describes the current in his book. And in 1827, George writes down his big law, Ohm's Law, which is, I mean, that is a phenomenal explosion of knowledge all stacked on top of each other. And it, I mean, three guys in the space of 30 years, less than 30 years, built the foundation of electrical engineering. And it only took me five years to graduate with the degree. So that is, I mean, it's crazy that they were able to do all that so quickly. Um, hopefully, hopefully you guys are, are following along. It sounds like uh, I, I do sound, sound okay. Um, let's see. Let me go to the chat and see what we got. Uh, oh, greenhouse gases. It looks like there was some jokes about methane, which there should always be jokes about methane uh, because it is a funny business. Um, and yeah, I think we're, we're good. If I missed anything, let's see. Uh, no. Oh, somebody said it's interesting that the parts, uh, the parts of the discoveries were from three different European countries. Um, that is true. But when I was doing a little bit of reading, Alessandro Volta and... Uh, Andre Ampere uh, both matriculated kind of to France uh, because they both ended up getting big awards from Napoleon. So while Alessandro started out in Italy, he kind of scooched his way across the border into France. And I wondered if they were, I mean, they were all contemporaries. So they all would have known one another, which is also kind of crazy. And I, I suspect there was a, a little bit of competition. I mean, there's one up and ship all the time. I, I do that. I mean, it is very hard not to participate in one-upsmanship. And I can only imagine if you are creating electrical engineering from scratch that you're not gonna try to do that. Um, now, on to Ohm's Law. So the battery that we're using today, rechargeable battery, the same one that I showed you on the last episode, is, does anybody remember how many volts this battery holds, one battery? Uh, if you do, Hit, hit me up in the chat. Um, and then the whole circuit that we're gonna be measuring is a battery, a resistor, and then we're going to use a current probe, the RTZC20B, to actually measure the current. So if I remember right, Ohm's law is, yep, yep, yep. On the chat, they said a million volts. That is really close. It is 1.2 volts. Uh, <laughs> a million volts. These guys. It is fun to get on the chat and, and just chat, 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 chat. I, I enjoy it. I, um, I've been jumping on a live stream of a buddy of mine, the bald engineer. Check him out, Ad Ohms. 
and I just love getting on to chat and just trying to trying to mess with him. It is it is uh, just a joy in life. So 1.2 volts. There are four batteries in our circuit. If I look at my setup over here, I have my little battery pack. Four batteries in this, so 1.2 plus 1.2 plus 1.2 plus 1.2 should be 4.8 volts. And I also, over in my setup, have an oscilloscope. And on that oscilloscope, I have my current probe plugged into channel one. This is the ZC20B. Oh, plug it back in. Oh, I need to point my camera at me because people get really mad when you get off the camera. And I think I'm backing up, so I'm going to be out of focus. And guys, I, I, I'm really struggling with how to do manual focus. Um, I don't know. I'm not very good at it. Tell anybody. Uh, channel 4. Channel, so channel 1 was the current probe. Channel 4 is my power rail probe. So I'm using this to measure the power rail because I'm measuring a battery, which is like the quintessential power rail. Um, Oh man, can I quickly explain how a current probe works? A 10 year old is asking. Yes, I can try. Um, let's see. So the current probe, basically, you see it has a loop. This, this particular one has a uh, loop and I put a wire through it. And as I put the wire through it, the current probe um, has a voltage induced in it because there are magnets in here, and so as the current flows through it, it induces a voltage, and then the oscilloscope measures the voltage, because that's what the oscilloscope does. An oscilloscope, also known as an oscope, I should probably do an episode where I just talk about what an oscope is. One of my neighbors walked by and she said, you know, your, your episodes are good, but I still don't know what you're talking about. I'm really trying to explain what I'm talking about, and I'm realizing it, it is very difficult. So, current probe. Current flows through it, voltage is induced on it, the oscilloscope measures the voltage. Um, induced. That's a tough one. I, I, don't know, I don't know a synonym for that word that would be 10-year-old vocabulary. I have to ask my 10-year-old to figure out if he knows what induced means. Um, but a current induces a voltage. On this, basically, you have as long as you have the wire running through this loop and current is flowing, this guy will detect it. So let's do that, actually. So let's make a couple of measurements on the oscilloscope. I realize it's I'm going to go a little bit over time here because I really want to creates, creates, induces, creates. Yeah, uh, the oscope wizard, not the English language wizard. English language is whoo. Still struggling. We're learning every day. Um, <laughs> another one. Induce. Make it happen. Uh, it's amazing when you're in front of a camera and you're trying to think. It's very hard. Um, okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, I got, oh, I got some help in the chat on what this means. So hopefully, if you're reading the chat, you can follow along. But one of them says, when a person runs around a track, they create wind. And if you measure the wind, you can guess at their speed. So that's, that's, a, that's a really good analogy. So if you measure the speed of the wind, you could infer the speed of the person who ran by. It's kind of like when a bus flies by you really fast on the street and you're on the sidewalk and you can feel that wind push you. Um, you could tell by the strength of that wind how fast that bus was going and how big it was. Um, more physics. Physics is everywhere, guys. It's, it's lovely and it's awesome. Back to the oscilloscope. So here's my scope. Um, why is it showing that screen? Got it. We are real pros here at the oscope wizard when it comes to using oscilloscopes at least. And um, if anybody knows my saying, Real pros press the preset button before they do anything on a piece of test equipment. So I'm going to press the preset button. We have got channel one rocking it purple. Um, let's see, we're a little bit off of zero right there. Let's see if I can go into my probe setup. Let's auto zero. 
I can hear the probe degaussing, so it's it's clicking through and clearing out the magnet. Because if it has magnetism built up in the probe, it is going to think that there is current there, um, and there is really not. Okay, so before the signal was not at zero, we hit that magic button that said detect auto zero, and the scope did that for me. Now, in the past, sometimes current probes, a lot of times they'll have like little knobs on them or, or um, buttons themselves, and you have to manually zero it and degauss it yourself, but this, this probe is uh, kind of a smart probe. It knows what it's doing. It's, it's, this is not its first rodeo. So the other thing that I need is a voltage because I have a current and on channel four, I have my voltage. I also have a handy dandy um, probe connected. It doesn't know that it's connected because I have it on channel three. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I can't even count to channel three. Here we go. Now, channel three. It's got my probe connected. Let's turn on the probe meter because that'll help me detect the voltage really easily. It's like a little multimeter because honestly, guys, my multimeter that I have, let's see. I showed it before, but this is my multimeter and it's very hard to see on the video camera. So I'm going to use my scope as a way overkill multimeter and uh, we'll make it happen. Oh, uh, chat. We good on chat? Feels good. Everybody following along? Everybody still awake? I know it's, um, it's a little later than, than normal, uh, but I did want to make an actual measurement. So let's plug my battery in. Um, hopefully, let me go over to the setup so you can see what I'm doing. I have the voltage probe plugged in right here. Um, into my breadboard. So this is my breadboard. And I was also wondering, why is this thing called a breadboard? If there's anybody in the chat who knows, why are these little prototype boards? I mean, it is the, this one is the Archie, Archer Universal Breadboard that I've had for 20 years, I think. Um, I'm not sure why it's called a breadboard. It was posited uh, that it looks like a piece of bread, but that is a stretch. Um, there's a very simple re reason, I'm sure. So let's get back to the scope. I can see that I have four batteries that should all be 1.2 volts. So 1.2 plus 1.2 plus 1.2 plus 1.2, 4.8. Uh, was it Archer, the Radio Shack house brand? Yes, it was the Radio Shack house brand. Uh, when I first moved um, to Atlanta to go to school, there was a giant, a giant Radio Shack that all of the engineering students went to. It was up uh, Buford Highway, if you know Atlanta, and just outside of the perimeter, and you could go in there and buy things off the shelf like breadboards, and it was really very nerdy. So let's see. Very early electronics were wired on a literal breadboard. So as in a board that you put bread on, like a baking sheet, so that's why it's called a breadboard. Man, that is kind of fascinating. Um, the hist yeah, oh, there we go. Yes, yes. Like, so, so a breadboard is named for an actual board that you put bread on after you baked it. That's what very early electronics were wired. You can tell that very early electronics were made by engineers and they just grabbed the closest thing that they had and they were like, what's this? A breadboard and some nails? Yes, I can make a circuit out of this. Um, Okay, yeah, engineers, they're just going to grab the closest thing at hand. Uh, so the probe meter, so this, instead of 4.8 volts, is 5.4 volts. So again, charge is a little higher than normal, but that's okay because we measured it. So we are not just trusting what is written on the battery. We are measuring uh, the voltage that is coming out of my battery pack. Now, the other part of Ohm's law, so let me turn this off, so I'm going to uh, turn my circuit off for a second, is uh, the resistor. Here's my tiny resistor. You can see it's very tiny. 
Um, if I go over to my other screen here, and if I could figure it out, you can see there's the resistor. It is, if you remember the color bands, very important. They let you know um, what the resistance is. So this guy, is, uh, I don't know if you can see it, is brown, black, black. Does anybody remember what that means? I know one of us thinks that that means measure it with a multimeter, which is ha 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 ha. But it is kind of funny. I, I, I laughed about that joke for a long time. Uh, so if I go into my handy dandy color code calculator uh, that I got from Googling, I go, uh, oh, sorry, brown, black, black. And my tolerance is gold, so it's a 5% tolerance resistor. That means that this, that, wait a second, brown, black, <laughs> am I colorblind? I can't even work a website? Oh my gosh, 10 ohms. So close, so close. I, I, the chat guessed 100 ohms, which is very close, but that is brown, black, brown. Uh, and this is brown, black, black. Uh, so, if I put my 10 ohm resistor in, I'm measuring a voltage that was 5.4 volts. Using Ohm's law, how much current do I think will run through this resistor? Don't... Can I get it in? Oh, you know, I should probably have shown y'all. Actually, the, the fun part is actually showing you, you know, inserting this, the resistor. So there's the resistor in the circuit. Current probe, handy dandy. Let's plug it into my, uh, I'm gonna plug it in uh, across our, wrap it around my wire. Now, fair warning. Oh man, I got cables in the background. That is a real shame. Uh, fair warning, resistors have another, um, tolerance so not just the resistance but it has a power handling capability and i believe that these are quarter watt resistors so there's a real good chance oh. <laughs> people were trying to answer the question to the resistance and they were trying to get 10 so there was a correct answer i feel like i should rewind time and give um thank you my oscope wizard sister figured that out good job um so, or what, is this my Oscope wizard brother-in-law? I can't tell, it's just A. Um, oh, and also that maybe they used wooden breadboards to make circuits because they don't conduct well. That is a pretty good guess. And I mean, that's, that's basically, we could write that on Wikipedia right now on the history of breadboards. In fact, we should all go to Wikipedia and if it doesn't say that about breadboards, put it and just see if anybody changes it. Um, back to doo -doo -doo, the oscilloscope. So I have current, uh, and I have, or I have my current measuring mechanism, and I have my voltage. All right, Oscope Wizard Sister. And I also have my resistor, 10 ohm resistor, 5.4 volt battery. What will my current be? If I equals V, divided by R. Let's go over to my screen. So, I will open up my calculator, put it right here. So I know that my V is 5.4, and I wanna divide that by 10. So I think, yep, there we go, 0 0.54, 0 0.54 amps. Or, or if, you're, if you're a real pro, you'd say 540 milliamps, because we like saying the word milli. It makes us sound smarter. And if you say it with a British accent, milli, it makes you sound even smarter. Um, so back to the scope. I think that when I turn this circuit on, my current probe is going to measure 5.4, or no, 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 540 milliamps. So one of the things that I need to do is make sure that I can actually see 540 milliamps. And if I go back over to my scope screen, I can see that this 
current probe can see from 250 milliamps down to minus 250 milliamps. So one of the things I can do is I could change the offset. So maybe, or I can change the current per div. So I can change the, um, oh my goodness, the resolution, the resolution, the, the, the uh, vertical resolution of that channel also known as something else that I don't remember. Oh my goodness. It is, it is, it's, uh, it's Thursday, it's almost Friday, guys. Quick break, we're gonna make a measurement. Gonna have a good and plenty. Okay, let's turn the current on. I'm very worried that this resistor is gonna pop pretty quickly. Uh, it gets really hot really fast because I'm sending more than a quarter amp. And maybe we'll even see, um, you know, some fire. There's a YouTuber who's very famous for setting things on fire. Um, but that's not me. All right, look, I got a measurement. Oh my goodness, I have smoke, I have smoke. We are, we are literally, we're smoking it. In electronics, that is called letting the magic smoke out. And um, generally that happens during final exams or uh, when you're doing your lab practical. That is when you really let the magic smoke out. So I let the magic smoke out of that resistor. But before I did, I was able to measure 545 milliamps, which is exactly what Ohm's law tells me it should be. Cool, right? Is everybody there? Is everybody with me? Do we feel good about it? We did it! We defined Ohm's Law, and then we measured Ohm's Law, and then we burnt up a resistor. And when you burn something up in a circuit, you have had a wonderful day of electrical engineering. So, I think on that note... I'm gonna try that again! <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, yeah, so we always try. We try. We're, we're trying here. Everybody's just trying something. Um, so, if there's any questions about Ohm's Law, I am going to be on chat for a little while. Or if you just want to nerd, about, nerd out about four terabyte hard drives or DOCSIS 3.1 cable modems, which I'm very excited about, or even Good and Plenty's, which, guys, if you don't like Good and Plenty's, uh, I know it's a, kind of a weird flavor. A lot of people don't like licorice. I find you suspect. Um, that is all I had for today, guys. I'm going to be on chat for about a couple minutes afterwards. And then in the next episode, I think, you know, maybe we'll actually define what an O-scope is. Why? I, I, goodness, I'm the O-scope wizard. It's an oscilloscope. We'll talk about Talk about it. Come back. See you next week. Oh, and by the way, next week, the stream is going to be at 2 p.m. Because I have some stuff happening in the morning. 2 p.m. I'll, I'll send, out, send out some reminders. Don't worry. Bye, guys.